This Week on ICN. The stories you should have heard, but didn't. Opposition to audit the Fed, starting to rear its head. Peter Schiff for Senate is looking more and more like reality. Husband wins election, first lady and daughters get all expenses paid trip to Europe. Small California town tracks everyone that enters or leaves their community. Those stories and more next on Informed Citizen News. Hello and welcome to ICN, Informed Citizen News, July 19th, 2009. As the Audit the Fed campaign has gained significant support, we are now starting to see the opposing side start to make some noise. More than 175 prominent economists warned that politicians' attacks on the Federal Reserve are putting the independence of U.S. monetary policy at risk and urged Congress to back off lest it undermine the Fed's ability to manage the economy and thwart inflation. The signers of the petition claim that the vehemence of the criticism from Congress of the Fed's handling of the financial crisis suggests a readiness in Congress to weaken the freedom the Fed has to move interest rates as it sees fit. The signers consisted of academic economists and former Fed officials, all Keynesians, of course. They failed to recognize that it is the Fed's manipulation of interest rates that cause each financial crisis. The Fed management of interest rates is like a novice oversteering a boat. By the time they recognize the indicators to change interest rates, it is invariably too late. Why is it that man always believes they can manage the unmanageable? If we remove the human element from artificially setting interest rates and stop printing money, the market will be allowed to function based on natural market forces. Only then will the booms and busts be a thing of the past. After the Congressional Energy Vote fiasco, where no member of Congress read the final bill prior to the vote, a grassroots organization, Let Freedom Ring, has organized a Pledge to Read drive. They are asking that members of Congress actually read the health care bill before voting on it. Signers pledge that they will not vote to enact the bill without first having read it in its entirety. And the bill must be available to the American people on the Internet for at least 72 hours so that they can read it too. It is a sad comment on the state of our republic when our representatives have to be treated like children. Economist Peter Schiff has a well-documented successful track record of forecasting economic events and trends. Mr. Schiff correctly called the housing bubble as early as 2003 and was ridiculed and laughed at for his negative predictions while appearing on CNBC, Fox and other business shows. He was an economic advisor to Ron Paul during his presidential run, which he personally claimed was the easiest job he had. Because Ron Paul was the last candidate running for president in 2008 that needed economic advice. Now Peter Schiff is all but officially throwing his hat in the ring and running for Senate in Connecticut. He recently launched a website, SchiffForSenate.com, where he is gauging support for a Senate run and taking donations. He will likely face incumbent Senator Chris Dodd, who has been in Washington since 1975. One would expect a parole-like candidacy from Schiff, where he will not be afraid to tell the voters the dire circumstances that America faces. The question will be, can the voters accept a candidate who will not promise the world? Schiff will likely explain that the economic conditions will need to get worse before it gets better so that America can build a prosperous economy on actual production and savings, instead of consumption and debt. Conspiracy theories have long claimed that the Council on Foreign Relations has influenced our leaders in Washington. Some go so far as to say that modern political leaders have been no more than CFR puppets. In a speech before the Council on Foreign Relations, Secretary of State Hillary Clinton acknowledged the direct influence that the CFR has had on official government policy. Mrs. Clinton began her speech by referencing the new CFR office in Washington, D.C. She said, I have been often to, I guess, the mothership in New York City, but it's good to have an outpost of the council right here down the street from the State Department. We get a lot of advice from the council, so this will mean I won't have as far to go to be told what we should be doing 
and how we should think about the future. Hillary Clinton, in her own words, providing more ammunition that the Council on Foreign Relations has great influence over our government. The AP did a story this week on a self-described ethical hacker. A few months back, Chris Paget spent a few hundred dollars on equipment and drove around San Francisco trying to get information. His target was government RFID chips embedded in passports. It took him all of 15 minutes to strike gold. He grabbed passport information off unsuspecting strangers. Critics say with advances in tracking technologies occurring rapidly, it won't be long before governments could be able to identify and track anyone in real time 24-7 from a cafe in Paris to the shores of California. On June 1st, it became mandatory for Americans entering the United States by land or sea from Canada, Mexico, Bermuda, and the Caribbean to present identity documents embedded with RFID tags, although your conventional passports remain valid until they expire. Critics warn that RFID-tagged identities will enable thieves and other criminals to commit contactless crimes against victims who won't immediately know they've been violated. Crime is a concern, but most fear government agents compiling chip numbers at peace rallies, protests, religious gatherings, or gun shows, simply by strolling through a crowd with a reader. Others worry more about the linking of chips with other identification methods, including biometric technologies, such as facial recognition. Should biometrics be coupled with RFID, governments will have, for the first time in history, the means to identify, monitor, and track citizens anywhere in the world in real time. And by the way, the International Civil Aviation Organization, the UN agency that sets global standards for passports, now calls for facial recognition in all e-passports. Tiburon, a small community north of San Francisco, will be tracking everyone, according to the San Francisco Chronicle. That's right, Tiburon will be recording every license plate number that enters or leaves their town. The readers, which use character recognition software, can compare plates to databases of cars that have been stolen or linked to crimes then immediately notify police of matches, said police chief Michael Cronin. Nicole Ozer, who directs policy on technology for the ACLU of Northern California, isn't as supportive. Ozer said to be under investigation simply because you entered or left Tiburon at a certain time is incredibly intrusive. Innocent people should be able to go about their daily lives without being tracked and monitored. City leaders promise to prevent abuses. Information on which cars enter and leave town will not be available to the public, they said, and will be erased within 60 days. Of course, government can always be trusted to keep their promises, right? With the US dollar declining, how much does a one-week trip to Europe cost nowadays? 3,000, 5,000, maybe even $10,000? Not even close. Try around $1 million. At least that was the estimated cost for Michelle Obama and daughter's private trip to Europe in early June. CNS News made repeated requests to obtain the costs of the private trip, but the White House refused to release any details about how the taxpayers' money was spent. CNS News article reports that the First Lady's trip included a 20-car convoy, Secret Service, accommodations for her and all supporting staff, and a multi-stop round-trip flight, costing up to $10,000 per hour. That doesn't include the separate military cargo flight to carry the official vehicles. These days, winning an election for some is like winning a million-dollar lottery. Thank you for joining ICN This Week. Americans need to be informed, so please send our link to your friends and family. From all of us at Informed Citizen News, have a great week.